So today we're looking at the IKEA Tradfree uh, LED smart bulb system. So this is a HomeKit compatible system that's been released by IKEA. It's also compatible with Amazon Alexa. Just because they were relatively inexpensive, I also picked up the dimming switch as well as the IKEA Tradfree motion sensor. So they've kind of got a full solution here for motion sensors, dimming switches, kind of all the above. So if you're looking at the gateway kit, this comes with the gateway. Um, the Tradfree system is Zigbee, just like the Philips Hue. And this is a couple E26 standard light bulbs, remote control. The gateway, of course, is that bridge that you're going to need to connect to your network. So if looking at this box, there is no HomeKit logo. And I'm always telling you guys, look for the HomeKit logo. Their system wasn't HomeKit compatible when it first came out. So we haven't seen the boxings updated yet. That'll probably happen soon, I would assume. For those of you who've been to an IKEA before, this is your typical IKEA box experience. There's not much special about this, right? There's no bells and whistles. There's no um, extra leaves or extra colors on the boxes. It's something pretty simple, right? Um, although it is quite hard to get into. So I'm going to skip past this part through the magic of video editing. So now we're getting into this. The first thing we're taking out is the regular remote control. So this is a multi-button control. We've also got a USB plug. So you've probably got a ton of these around the house already. This is the IKEA version. And this is also includes the ethernet cable, which is going to be used to plug in the bridge. This is just a regular RJ45. And the micro USB cable, again, to power the bridge. So that's going to be plugged into that little USB um, wall plug. And you're going to be good to go. The next thing we're going to take out here is the gateway itself. And the gateway is fairly large. This is one of the the largest gateways I've seen, but it's solid, right? It's pretty good. So the light bulbs, we've seen light bulbs before. We're gonna take this away. Um, it's got a QR code there on the back. Not sure what that's for. Um, we can open this up and there on the inside, we can see the ethernet, or you're gonna plug that into your existing network, wired network and the micro USB to charge it. We've got a bunch of buttons here and we'll get to those later. So now we're going to open the dimming switch. So this is actually kind of interesting. Um, this thing works by simply twisting it. So we'll uh, open this up. There we go. It's also magnetic. So this will stick to metal windows, frames, um, things like that. So it's it's actually kind of an interesting product. All these come with little, um, I think they're a CR2032 little watch type of battery, about the size of a nickel. So these you're going to have to replace over time, but the nice thing is they're fairly easy to get into. Um, the IKEA things, everything is kind of do-it-yourself, kind of put it together. So they've got these little mounting brackets, so you're going to be able to actually mount these to the walls if you so choose and spin them around. So the last thing here we've got is the thread-free motion sensor. So again, I think this was about um, $12, something like that. So they're actually getting really, really inexpensive which is nice. That's that's good news for all us smart home addicts. And of course, in all these boxes, I don't think I've shown this yet, but there is there is a picture, um, pictogram style instructions for every single one of these products in here. <clears throat> we'll rip this open. There we go. And again, this has those little uh, same batteries, the CR2032s. And that's it. So this is the motion detector. So now we're going to take a tour over to the app and see what it's going to take to actually set this up. So I will tell you this was painful. Um, it was extremely painful for me to get this up and running. In fact, we're doing this on the iPhone now because the iPad just didn't work. So first thing we do, we're going to have to scan that gateway code. So you're going to have to be close to your gateway or take a picture of it. So I'm going to grab that QR code here and we'll get it with the dots and we will scan it. This has been plugged into my network and now we go. There are your trad free devices. Let's get started. So what device would we like to add? We're going to choose one of our control devices first. This would be the motion sensor and there's instructions here. You're going to open the back of it. Um, you might need tools for this, might need a screwdriver to get into it. You're going to reset the motion sensor by quickly pressing the button next to the little um, symbol four times and the red light will appear and it will flash in your motion, motion sensor. After the light stops flashing, wait 10 seconds. Do a slow 10 count here. I had quite a bit of trouble getting these connected. Eventually, I kind of started to get the hang of it. 
but it was a painful process. I will warn you. This is not the most friendly um, kind of startup process that I've seen yet. It did work in the end, but there were some issues with it. And there we go. The motion sensor has been successfully found. So this is going to go into another group here. Um, what else would we like to add? We will now add the dimming device. This one I had some problems with. This is it's really kind of hit and miss. Once you've got the system up and running, it seems to work. But finding these things, eh, there was some issues. You do have to hold this thing when it says you have to hold it close to um, your bridge within two centimeters. You have to be pretty much touching it. So that's one thing I would uh, definitely encourage you guys is to make sure your bridge is right in front of you. You're probably going to be sitting in front of your wireless router, wireless modem with these things plugged in. And there we go. <clears throat> the remote control has now been found. We can click on the OK button. So we've now got a few groups here. And now let's set up Apple HomeKit. So we can also, of course, do Amazon Alexa. Required update, so an important update has been performed and Trad Free is going to the next version. So that update is necessary for us to be able to get HomeKit support. Um, IKEA launched a couple of times on this and they stumbled a bit, but it seems to be working now more or less. So we can see here the uh, Trad Free version, it's something went wrong. Um, you can kind of see that there's a required update there. It will be unavailable during the updates, and this is going to take a bit of time, so be prepared to wait on this. So I lost connectivity to the gateway for a little bit. I actually dropped from my wireless network. So I'm going to come back in here again. We'll check it out to see if the um, it's still updating. Okay, that's good. So the device itself took the updating command, but when we look here, we've got 1242, so this is the latest version as of um, end of November 2017. But we can see that my, at least my motion sensor and my wireless dimmer still have to update. So we're going to let this go and uh, wait till this is finished. So now we're going to go into the integrations. As you can see here, this is a software code here. Again, HomeKit wasn't released, so they've actually got the HomeKit code built right into the software. So we're going to use this code, and we're going to go back over to the Apple Home app, and we're going to add the accessory. I'm just going to say add accessory, use the HomeKit code, or scan it in. Of course, I can not scan it in. So we've got a couple of devices here. We're going to choose the Trad Free Gateway, and we're going to put in that code. Make sure it stays connected to power and is nearby. We're going to click Next. Additional setup is required. Click Next. So this is where things get a little interesting, is I actually have lights in this guy, but the lights aren't actually getting added to HomeKit. So it looks like there's some kind of an order of operations thing going on, um, which I was to, to discover over time. Um, the other thing I also discovered is that the, the remotes, the remote control, um, the wireless motion sensor, the wireless dimmer, none of these are exposed to HomeKit at this time. So this is very similar to where Philips Hue was in uh, up until basically, I think, October 2017, where if they want to expose these as well as remote controls within HomeKit, they're going to have to do a firmware update. So the nice thing Philips has taught us is we know it's possible, but it's something that we're going to have to wait for from IKEA. Hey guys, so here we are with the IKEA bulb. I'm wearing the IKEA Tag 3 app. We're going to push the plus button here to add a new bulb. And it's going to ask us which control device are you using? We're going to use the remote. And it says connect the light, hold your remote control within two centimeters of the bulb, press and hold the button next to the little symbol for 10 seconds. Use your light source, will dim and brighten. Keep the button pressed until the pulsing stops. So here we are, here is the IKEA. Um, the light's not really great here, but it will be better in a couple seconds when I turn this on. So we're just gonna pop this guy open. 
And you can see here, we've got this little button right here. So we're gonna wait till the light's turned on. And then we're gonna hold this close and we're gonna hold it down for that 10 seconds. Now you can see the light bulb is flickering. And it's back on. Okay. So now, in theory, if I press this button, it'll turn off. If I press the button, it'll turn back on. So this is, again, very much like the Philips Hue bulbs um, in that you don't actually add the bulbs directly to HomeKit, but in theory, now that this is in here, we should be able to go back over to the app and see that it has been successfully loaded. And hopefully, I might see something in HomeKit. So far, I have not seen any bulbs exposed, and I have been able to figure out, doing a little research, that the remotes, the motion sensors, all the above, do not work with HomeKit currently. So hopefully that will come in an update soon. Let's go over to the app. So we can now see in the app that we've got two bulbs loaded here. We can go into our update here and we can see that the app, uh, the bulbs are both properly at 12217. We can always check for updates if we want. So it's telling us we're up to date. So now we're gonna go over to the Apple Home app. And we're going to see if I've seen anything now that I've added another trad free bulb in here. So this is interesting. I've actually got the trad free bulb. So it may be that what I'm going to have to do is to undiscover, I guess if that meant factory reset the old bulb and then add it back in and see if this comes back. So Again, kind of with my IKEA experience, I am a little painful. I had to factory reset the bulb, which after a little bit of research, you simply toggle the power on it six times in a row quickly. But once I did that and I then repaired the remote to the bulb and voila, here it is in the Apple Home app, which is kind of cool. Um, of course, I don't get the remotes. I don't get the motion sensor. None of that's in there yet but I do have the bulbs controlled within Apple HomeKit. So on to the final review. What did I think of the IKEA bulbs? Um, this was painful. This was really, really a painful experience for me. Hopefully um, this will get better over time. It could be part of this is the fact that I got a gateway that had just didn't have any of the updated firmware. Um, first revisions of products when they come out, Usually they need a firmware update, and this gateway, it was a painful experience. Discovering and pairing the, the remotes was a painful experience. Getting the light bulbs up and running was not that bad, but when I first did it, they didn't appear in HomeKit at all. Again, I had to go back and factory reset the gateway at one point. I had to factory reset pretty much all of the accessories, but on the bright side, at the end of the day, I was able to successfully get this up and running which is is good. Um, it did take me, I won't lie, probably two, three hours of fighting with this. And you may be in for that pain right now if you buy these um, and run out today in December, November of uh, 2017, and you're looking for an easy experience, you might want to look at the Philips Hue, and, you know, they do cost more, for sure. But you get that nice experience. Um, as well... I'm really hoping Ikea is going to uh, continue on with this line. After I got everything set up, it it works. Uh, what more can I say than that, right? It's, it's a, seems to be a stable product. Um, the lights turn on, the lights turn off. I have the dimming, the home kit uh, exposed pieces, the, just the two light bulbs that I have. They seem to work fine. And the price is really, really inexpensive. These are some of the uh, least expensive bulbs on the market, assuming you've got an Ikea close to you. I hope this was useful for you guys. Um, if it was, please, you know, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And definitely if you wanted more tips and tricks on just making your house just a little bit smarter, please check in the video notes below where there is a coupon code for my Udemy course, um, Smarter Houses, Making Your Home Smarter with Apple HomeKit. Thanks.